Reflect and reset with Maria and Gina. You probably don't recognize me because it's been so long. It's been a while since my partner has been with me, but yeah, but I'm back. You're back. We're excited to have you. Yeah. It's a lot easier. I miss her, but when she misses a show, it's for a great reason because we're trying to run a business and we have a very serious mission here. So, talking about our mission, Gina, we have a yes. very important guest for me us. Too. So we have been doing business with the Hudson Valley Cancer Service Program for how many years? Uh, since 2017. Since 2017, and we have Leah Casarino here with us, who is the director of the program. And we're gonna give you a bunch of information about if you qualify, how you can get some services. But let's talk to Leah first and see how you got into this, and tell us a little bit about you first. Uh, well, uh, my background is in public health, and I have worked in this particular program for about seven years, and prior to that, I ran a program just like this in a different county, because there's programs like this in all the counties, and serving all the counties in New York State. But when they opened this one up, I, I got this job. It's, and and why don't you explain what is the Cancer sure. Services Program? So the Cancer Services Program is a state and federally funded program that provides free breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer screenings to people who are uninsured or underinsured. We also pay for uh, any diagnostic services. If those screenings should come back abnormal and they need to look at things a little further, then we will pay for those diagnostic like services. Like a For example, yes, okay. can, given that it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, yes. for example. Yes. Yes. So, um, so for uh, a mammogram, for example, you go for a screening mammogram. Sometimes they may see something they want to get a little better look at just to make sure everything's okay. So they'll have you come back for what they call a diagnostic mammogram or an ultrasound, and we'll pay for that. And we will pay for the services to lead up to a diagnosis to either rule in or rule out cancer. And if some, by chance a, a person is diagnosed with cancer, we have programs that they can be enrolled in that pay for their treatment. Or um, through a special Medicaid program or through emergency Medicaid, depending on their qualifications. And you help them through that process. Yes, sure. we do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you are somebody that doesn't have insurance or is underinsured, right? Because there's a lot of people, right, Gina, that are underinsured. Yeah, we have a lot of people. But we were just talking to somebody that has a deductible of $8,000. Wow. It's, it's, it's just not fair. It's well, not most fair. insurances will pay for screenings. But it's when that screening comes back and it's abnormal and you need additional services, that's when they're, un they're underinsured because that's when the out-of-pocket comes. And oftentimes the cancer services program can help with that. Yeah. And actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have sent, how many patients did we oh, send? we have sent. Well, since I happen to have those statistics. Oh, okay. <laughs> so since 2017, you have sent us about 200 patients. Uh, 2017 was your first year, and then it like, practically tripled in the second year. And we've had about uh, six people who were diagnosed either with cancer or precancerous conditions that we caught early enough for them to get their treatment. So it, it's a great program, and so many of your uh, participants in 4 May, patients here, uh, participate in the program. You, know, you get it early and you save a life. Yeah. You know, it's and um, I mean, this is, you know, I was saying how we have a purpose. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, today I was listening to a, a, a video that I shared with uh, quite a few people, and the video talks about how important it is to understand your purpose in life. And when you, and many of us don't understand why we're here, right? We ask that question, and the reason I'm talking about it is because knowing what you just said, like Gina and I, I can tell you, and I know you do. I'm sure you feel the same way. Look at that, you know, over close to 200 people that we have sent. You have six people that you could potentially save their lives. Right. It makes you feel so good. It's a very rewarding program, which is why I've been in it so long. And um, our staff is uh, very compassionate too to work with and you know, very experienced in working with people in these situations, because even if you don't have a cancer diagnosis, which is the vast majority of people don't, there's still, you get something back, it's a little odd, you know, it's, you're still a little uncomfortable, um, or maybe a little nervous, 
And we have case managers um, who are called care coordinators who will work with those patients and help them overcome their anxiety and help to address any barriers they may have to getting the services that they need. So it's a full service program. So um, I know that they recommend, I think, you know, a certain age mm -hmm. to have these tests done. Mm -hmm. So is there a eligible, do they have to be eligible sure. by age? There are several eligibility requirements. Uh, first of all, for women, they have to be age 40 and older. And for men who participate on colorectal cancer screening, they have to be 50 and older. So what, if, and what happens if it runs in the family now? Well, um, it really depends on um, their, the history and things like that. Uh, but we do have services for women who are under the age of 40. Good. We do make exceptions when it comes to breast. Uh, services. Not, we don't have serve that age group for cervical colorectal, but for breast, if, uh, oftentimes we'll get a woman who will call up, she's under the age of 40, I was just taking a shower, I felt a lump in my breast, I need somebody to look at it. So they can go to one of our providers who work with us, just like Forme does, and the provider will do what's called a clinical breast exam, and they will feel for lumps or masses in the breast. If the provider finds something that they believe should be looked at even further with imaging, such as a, a mammogram, then uh, we can enroll them in the program at that point, since they're under the age of 40, and we'll review the findings, and if um, everything looks like we sh should go ahead and do the imaging, we can then pay for that imaging. And if she has to go to, for a, to a breast surgeon, we'll pay for that, and any, you know, if she has to have a biopsy, we'll pay for that. So it does depend on the circumstances. And on our staff, we have a, a physician assistant who is our clinical coordinator who will review these um, findings, <coughs> to discuss it with the provider, and can approve the services then for payment for women. But not board. cervical. What happens with cervical? Well, with cervical services, uh, we serve women 40 and older. Um, for under, we just don't have those services available at this time. They used to many, many years ago serve uh, 18 and older, but um, they stopped that long before. Are there exceptions? Because I know that we have somebody who actually came out, um, Dr. Say is a little nervous about her findings, but she's 36. Yeah, unfortunately, we do, for cervical, we do not have exceptions for, for that, no. but no. we do for breast. Okay. Yeah. yeah, breast, I tell you personally, I, I have a little cold, so you can hear that my voice is not as strong as it usually is, but I went through the, the experience, right? I, we like to talk about our experiences yeah. because people can relate, and I was exercising, and I felt when I was moving my arm, I actually felt a little long. And I'm like, wow, this feels weird. I touched my breast and I realized that I have a lung. So I went to a doctor who examined me and then the doctor says, oh no, you need to have this checked. I went and had a mammogram and then they did a sonogram and then I needed to have a biopsy. Remember I went uh, for the biopsy and it's scary and you don't even want to scare your family because I know I actually, Gina was the only one that knew in my doctor, but I didn't want to tell anybody because I'm like, everybody gets so afraid yeah. when you hear you need a biopsy. And uh, it's scary. But to know that you have people like you and us, you know, we care for our patients, we take care of them, and we make sure we send them to the right place. And that's why, you know, we work with you because we know that you care. And we see that over and over again with the patients that we send to you. And um, so, it's this community, you know, we want you to know that there is no excuse. You, you need to have your mammogram. You know, this is Breast Cancer Awareness, Awareness Month, and there are so many people that get affected by this disease. And we can prevent, you know, from going to a level where there is no return. So it is very important to do preventive. Absolutely. Screening. And one of the things I want to point out is that we are a public health program. So we look at the health of a whole community. And that includes uh, anybody in that community, whether they are um, a citizen or not, whether they're documented or not, that doesn't matter. They can still come to our program as long as they meet the criteria of the age. They must live in one of the six counties we serve, which I'll go over in a minute. And they're normally uninsured or underinsured. 
And if they meet that criteria, we want them to come to the program, get the screenings, all the screenings that they're eligible for. And by doing this, we help people who might not normally be able to afford, you know, out of pocket to pay for these services. We help them to get their services, get the peace of mind to know, okay, I'm good for this year. You know, or if there is a little something, we can find it early. Because what a mammogram does is really detect things a lot earlier than before you can feel it even. And can, you can address any problem early on and get it resolved. And by doing that, we raise the level of screening rates in an entire community where everybody is up to date with their cancer screenings. And when that's the case, you lower the number of people who get diagnosed with late stage right. cancer. Because right. mm -hmm. the earlier uh, a situation is found, the easier it is to treat, the less invasive it is for the patient, and usually less expensive it is too. Yeah. And you know, we've realized that it's so important to have these tests that we created, you know, through our medical membership, you know, we're able to get our members uh, mammograms for $100. I mean, that's unheard of. free so, through the cancer service. Oh, free. Right. But exactly. if, you're, if you're under yeah. 40 and you yeah. need it, and Dr. Yes. Usada wants to send you for one, it's $100. Mm -hmm. I mean, versus if you go to the hospital, it could be $1,300 for yes. the bill. Mm -hmm. So we actually fight for them so they're able to get the preventative medicine they need because you don't understand that, you know, we have people that would, Last time they went to gynecologist was when they had their child nine years ago. And you're like, why? You know, because they just don't want to go back because of costs. And that's where we step in yeah. and, and help them um, try to get all these services. And that's why this is such a great partnership working with right. 4MA and the Cancer Services Program. You really serve a high need population yeah. that can access services they couldn't access before through the various programs that you have. And by joining with us, get the cancer screenings for free that they may not have been able to afford. Yeah. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Let, let's talk about the uh, fit test, because I know that the, we get a lot of phone calls. Patients say, you know, I need a colonoscopy, but my God, it costs so much money. Right. And even though we've been able to negotiate a, a, a good deal, but a good deal still is still uh, costly. Yeah. I know that you guys offer the FIT test. Can you talk about the FIT test and what it sure, is? Sure, sure. Yeah. So this is the colon cancer screening test that is um, a test that you take home and you do in the privacy of your own home. And what it is, is basically it's a test that tests for blood in the stool. If it comes back positive, meaning there's blood present uh, and you're enrolled in the cancer services program, we can then pay for a colonoscopy. If it comes back negative, then you just get another one of those fit tests every year. It's a good way to monitor your colon's health. And if uh, and it's for people who are not at uh, increased risk for colon cancer. For example, they don't have a family history of it or personal history, or they haven't had precancerous polyps removed in a previous colonoscopy. This is just for average risk people who have no risk factors at all for colorectal cancer. And it's such an easy test to do. And, and like I said, you do it in the privacy of your own home. And um, I'm not sure how Formate does it here, but either the patient can either mail it back to the lab, because there's an envelope and everything that comes in the test, or some, at some of our providers, they bring it back to the provider's office and then they mail it to the lab. But it's, it's a very simple thing to give you peace of mind. Yeah. And so does it, I mean, if you're um, <coughs> diagnosed with pre-cancer, will it show up? It, well, let me just back to one thing. It is for people age 50 and older for okay. colorectal cancer so screening. So most people, if you're over the age of 50, when you hit 50, you you're supposed to have a colonoscopy. Yes, right, exactly. And like you said, not everybody can afford it, and this is a good substitute to monitor the health. Um, if you already have, uh, I wasn't sure what your question was. If you're so, in other words, um, if I'm over the age of 50 and I never had a colonoscopy, will it detect even if it was like a precancerous or? A you know, it doesn't I what, Okay, I understand what you're saying. What, uh, what it detects is blood in the stool. And the reason why it detects that is because, well, I mean, or how it detects that is that in the colon, when you have growths that are called polyps, sometimes those polyps can be precancerous and develop into cancer. And every once in a while, polyps will bleed. And that blood could show up in the fit kit test. Mm -hmm. So that's why if it comes back positive, meaning blood showed up, then you're going to go for a colonoscopy to see if there are polyps. Now there's different types of polyps. Not all of them are precancerous or cancerous. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of a colonoscopy, it is a, uh, a tool that can also treat the condition. 
in most cases. So if there is a precancerous polyp, while they're right there, they take the, they remove it. So, so that it's gone. And then, you know, you're good for usually about three to five years. You don't even need to do any screenings, uh, depending on, on the type of polyp found and things like that. Mm -hmm. How about for men that have um, prostate, the, the prostate, prostate uh, exam? exam. Mm -hmm. Like what, at what age? Uh, That's usually also for a age 50 and older. Okay. Um, we do not do screening for prostate cancer, but it is recommended that men talk to their doctors about whether or not they need the, uh, the test for prostate cancer and, and should get an exam. And they should talk to the doctor about what could be signs and symptoms and, uh, and then go from there. Uh, but what we do do in the way of prostate cancer, if somebody is uh, uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer and they need treatment, we have, uh, and if they're uninsured, there is a program that we have that we can enroll them in that would pay for their cancer treatment for prostate cancer as well. That's good to know because a lot of times people have this misconception that if they don't have insurance and they are ill, they're that they're stuck, yeah. that there is no help. And yeah. they realize even, you know, they, oh my God, I have no money to be able to pay for this. There is help out there. You can call us, you can call the cancer program. Right. There is help out there. You're not alone. And that's why for us these shows are important because we are telling the community, you know, communicating with them and letting them know that you people like you exist. Yes. Yes. That's important. We appreciate the uh, you know the opportunity to publicize our services because it is you know, we do get the word out. We serve between four to 5,000 people every year, but you know, you, there's always new people coming into the community or coming of age to be eligible for the program who need to find out about it. And another thing I also want to point out is we often get calls from people who had insurance and then lost it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these people have already been diagnosed with cancer and were undergoing cancer treatment and lost their insurance, and we can help them as well. So I would recommend if anybody in that kind of a situation can call our office and we can determine if they're eligible. And I'll, I'll just give out, we have a toll-free number. Yes. It's 855-277-4482. It's or you could also call for me. Yes. And uh, they can give you the number. And, and Gemma on your staff, yes. for May is very helpful with us and working to help to enroll people in the cancer services program there. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, pap smear. Let's talk about pap smears because I know that this is, we were actually talking about this today, how it's changing so much when you're supposed to have how these tests. And the pap smears, I remember in my time, you know, it was every year you should be doing a pap smear, but that has changed, right? It has changed, but so many people still think it's that. Yeah. Really, uh, when you get a pap test, if you get <coughs> just the path test, then you and it comes back negative or normal, then you, you're due in three years. And if you get a path test along with a test for HPV, which is human papillomavirus, which um, has very many strains of it, but there's certain ones that cause most of the cervical cancer cases. So if you get a path test along with an HPV test, and those both come back negative, you're good for five years. Mm -hmm. And that's the same frequency that the Cancer Services Program also provides those services. Do yeah. you work with all the gynecologists in the area? So they all know about you? No, no we don't. We could possibly work with every single one. I mean, but do they know if they, have an under, if they have an underinsured or uninsured to call you? Do they know? Well, um, there are, I can't, I can't really vouch for every single one if they would know right. that. There are some that do know. Um, but we work with, we have a network of providers, much like an insurance company would. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these providers in throughout the six counties that we serve, which is, by the way, I should mention those. So it's Westchester, Rockland, Dutchess, Ulster, Putnam, and Sullivan counties are the counties that we serve. And as I said, we have primary care providers, we have gynecologists, we have gastroenterologists, we have breast surgeons, we have labs, we have anesthesiologists that all work with us. And as long as somebody's coming through our program that goes through our providers, we can pay for those services. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, one of the things that we want to let people know, because there is a lot of people that have gone, let's say, uh, to have a, a, son of, a mammogram. And I'm losing my voice as I speak. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we should tell them the story about our patient. Since my voice, I got to give us a little rest. 
um, the patient that went to the hospital and paid thirteen hundred dollars. Right. So well, was going to pay thirteen hundred. Right. So we had a patient who was a member um, who uh, needed a, a mammogram, and she didn't go to the place we sent her to. She went by mistake. She went to White Plains Hospital, and um, she received a thirteen hundred dollar bill. Now the problem with this, as we talk about, is if you're undocumented, they're afraid. They're afraid to go to collections. They're going to pay that bill, but they will never go back again. And have a mammogram. And have a mammogram mm -hmm. and have any preventative test because they know that the bills are going to be too much and they can't afford it. Now we have friends at the hospital, so Maria was able to have the bill, bill pretty much disappear. Um, but normally we wouldn't be able to do that if you went someplace that we didn't have a relationship with. Sure. But you know, it's always good for us to let people know that you have so many options and we, as well as, as, as Leah and, and her team, you know, we're advocates for you. And sure. if you need anything and we don't have it or we, we don't have a, a connection, we find it for you. You know, um, you just yeah. did something uh, as well. She just, we just had a patient, this is going off the track of cancer service program, who came in, who was a member who broke his finger, right? Nobody would help this man. He went to a hospital, he went to Greenwich Hospital. And they sent him away. They, with a broken finger, and they sent him to Open Door. And he was like, but Open Door doesn't do okay. surgery. So she, he was on his own, so he came to us. And Maria, again, my partner in crime here, she got on the phone with one of the orthopedists that we do business with. She negotiated a visit cost for him, and if he needs surgery, we'll go to that level, and we'll negotiate that as well. Um, and just on that subject, I yeah. just wanted to bring it up that we just got our tax-exempt status for oh. Promise to Aid. So we are 501c3, and you're gonna be hearing about us because a man like that who maybe needs surgery and can't afford to pay, we would negotiate the rate for our member mm -hmm. and then see what he can afford because we're supplemental, we're not gonna pay for everything, but see what he can afford to pay and then we'll pay the balance. Yeah. I mean, we are there. Yeah. It's a safety net is what you are, really. A yeah. safety yeah. net. Like, we want to yeah. be all inclusive if we can, so yeah. we're working on it. We're gonna make That's that great. company a big, big company to be able to fund a lot of healthcare for people. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's inspiring. So for all the women out there, because it is breast, Cancer it's Awareness Month. Right. Um, we want to make sure, please go get your mammogram yes. done. Get, touch your breast. You know, we are afraid to touch our breast. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear this. I said mine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, hey, I said mine all the time. <laughs> I love her. Authenticity, that's what we are. <laughs> Truly authentic. Hey, but me. it is true. Like, they're afraid to touch the breast. But it is important yes. to touch your breast, exam your breast. And then at the same time, go to your gynecologist. Have them right. give you a breast exam. Mm -hmm. Or what primary else? care doctors. Or primary care doctors, yeah. And, and you know, breast cancer is the second leading uh, type of cancer among women in New York State. That's so incredible. it's so important, um, especially now, you know, so many women are now aware of mammograms and breast cancer because of the breast cancer awareness. So we do see a lot of women, especially this time of year, going to get their uh, mammograms, but not everybody is due in October right. for a mammogram, right. you know? So, I mean, this is the kind of thing you have to keep in your mind all year round. And so many women, you know, put themselves last and put yes. their families yes. first. Yes. And this is the kind of thing that if you want to put your family first, you have to be healthy to do that. So taking care of your own health is really also taking care of your family's health in the end. Yeah. Yeah. It is so easy to forget your appointment because I know that happened to me. I'm supposed to have every six months a follow up, uh -huh. a, a breast ultrasound, and then a mammogram and a breast ultrasound. And uh, I there was one day, uh, one year that I forgot that six months. You didn't set your alarm. I know, but <laughs> I didn't set. Everything. I set alarms for mm -hmm. everything. I use series like that's my best friend. <laughs> but I happened to do that, but. If you're, you know, if you use a calendar, like you gotta put that appointment, you gotta make that appointment and be checking because it is so they easy. They send you reminders also. Yeah. If you can do a book an appointment a year in advance, they will send you a reminder. And some places even have a telephone, automated telephone. Yeah, or a yes. Yes. text. Yes. So. But the truth is, is that, you know, if you're gonna book an appointment, show up. Not only for yourself, but, you know, the doctor is making time for you. 
show up. It's very disrespectful not to call and not to show up and, and save your life. You know, you never know when, you, when you're going to find something that, that could be serious. So, so, I mean, don't risk it. Leah, we want to thank you. Yeah. Um, always a pleasure having you here. We had yeah. Leah here last year for the same in October. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, we know that your mission is also our mission. Yes. And we're here to help. And uh, like what you said, I, I love it. You know, you have you come first. If something happens to you, you know, your family suffers. That's right. And so many times we just tend to forget that we need to take care of ourselves. We need to make sure we do our physicals, that we do our mammograms, that we do the colonoscopy, that we prevent something that could end up taking your life. And then you affect your entire family. Right. So you are the important person in your family. So let's, Leah, if you can just say the number again. For the sure, the, for the Cancer Services Program, it's 855-277-4482. And we're open from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. And I believe, and if we don't have it, I believe we have a link uh, to you, on the website to you. Mm -hmm. So people can go on our website right. too. What's our website? Oh, www.womanmedicalcenter.com. Awesome. So we want to thank you yes. for joining us. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your support. And we want to say that if you like the show, make sure you like us. You like us. Take care. Thank you, Leah. Thanks, Leah. Take care.